The topic for this presentation is the 2011 coding changes for lower extremity endovascular arterial intervention. Please keep in mind that CPT codes and their descriptors are property of the American Medical Association. Endovascular arterial therapy is generally reported to the insurance carrier using component coding guidelines. With that, there are generally three codes reported. One code is for the catheterization, a second code is for the diagnostic imaging when performed, and a third code is actually a set of codes for the endovascular intervention. That set generally has a surgical code, which begins with a three, and a radiology supervision and interpretation code that begins with a seven. There are different sets for percutaneous transluminal angioplasty, or PTA, stent, and atherectomy. Atherectomy was flagged by a RUC screen for excessive growth. Because of this, a work group was formed, including members from vascular surgery, radiology, and cardiology. After deliberation over several years with the CPT panel, all lower extremity endovascular interventions for arterial revascularizations were addressed in one code change proposal. Category 1 CPT codes were created for PTA, stent, and atherectomy interventions from the aortic bifurcation distally. A completely separate set of Category 3 CPT codes, or T codes, were created for atherectomy in the supra-inguinal vessels. For this ch code change proposal, the surgery code and the radiology supervision and interpretation code for the intervention were bundled together. Previously, there was a different set of coding for the open treatment compared to the percutaneous treatment. In the new code change proposal, open and percutaneous are treated the same. There will be no separate descriptor to describe either approach. The catheterization code were bundled in the Category 1 lower extremity endovascular intervention codes, but they were not bundled for the Category 3 supraingual atherectomy codes. Therefore, anything from the inguinal ligament distally will have the catheter bundled. Iliac angioplasty and stenting will also have it bundled, but iliac atherectomy will not. The catheterization for diagnostic purposes, whereby an additional catheter is placed, is not bundled. Also, the initial diagnostic angiography was not included in this code change proposal. Remember, the definition of a recent diagnostic study is outlined in the CPT manual. The introductory wording gives two options. Option 1 says that a diagnostic angiogram performed at the time of an interventional procedure is separately reportable if no prior catheter-based angiography is available, a full diagnostic study is performed, and the decision to intervene is based on this study. Therefore, if a patient had a prior angiogram and was brought back to the angiography suite for an intervention, that angiogram would not be reportable. A limited study would not be reportable since a full diagnostic angiogram is required. Option 2 says that a prior study has been performed, but something is different. The patient's condition with respect to the clinical indication has changed since the prior study. Perhaps the patient had claudication at the time of the study and now has ischemic rest pain. 2. There was inadequate visualization of the anatomy or the pathology. Or three, there's a clinical change during the procedure that requires new evaluation outside the target zone for the actual intervention that has been performed. In the introductory wording, a sentence has been added to help coders describe, to understand when to report the code. It says, if diagnostic angiography is necessary, is performed at the same session as the interventional procedure, and meets the above criteria, modifier 59 must be appended to the diagnostic radiologic supervision and interpretation codes 
to denote that diagnostic work has been done following these guidelines. The Category 1 Lower Extremity Endovascular Intervention Bundling includes all of the following. The catheterization, the road mapping, completion angiography after the procedure has been performed, the surgical procedure itself, the radiology SNI for that intervention, embolic protection if it is employed, whether it's open or percutaneous access, and any use of an arterial closure device. The Category 3 supraingual atherectomy code bundle includes road mapping, completion angiography, the surgical procedure code and the radiology supervision and interpretation code for that intervention, and the open or percutaneous access. But remember, embolic protection is not bundled, and the catheterization is not bundled. Catheterization for supraingual atherectomy is separately reportable. For that Category 1 code set, four interventional groups have been created. Number one is angioplasty. Number two is stent with or without angioplasty. Three, atherectomy with or without angioplasty. And four, the combination of both stent and atherectomy within the vessel with or without angioplasty. For each vessel treated, only one of these four codes is reported. That means that you would not report both the angioplasty and the stent if both were performed. In the past, the intent rule stated that if you attempted an angioplasty with the predetermined purpose of just an angioplasty, and completion imaging demonstrated an inadequate result and stent salvage was performed, you could report both the angioplasty and the stent. The angioplasty was reported with a 59 modifier. In this new bundling set, there is no intent rule. If a stent is placed primarily, it would be reported with the stent code. If a lesion is predilated and then a stent placed, it is reported identically with just the stent code. If the patient comes to the angiography suite with the intention for an angioplasty and that is performed and there's an inadequate result requiring stent salvage, it also is reported identical with just the stent code since the angioplasty has been bundled with that procedure. The same thing goes for atherectomy as well as with the stent and atherectomy groupings. In the past, there's been some confusion as to whether a cryoplasty was an angioplasty or not, and therefore the introductory wording now includes a description that angioplasty, or PTA, includes low-profile balloons, cutting balloons, or cryoplasty. Atherectomy includes all forms of atherectomy, including directional, rotational, and laser. And stenting includes balloon expandable, self-expanding, bare metal, covered, or drug-eluting stents. Each of those four procedures can be performed in one of these three territories. The lower extremity from the aortic bifurcation to the foot has been divided into these three territories. Number one is the iliac, number two is the femoropopliteal, and number three is the tibial perineal. The iliac is comprised of the common the external and the internal iliac arteries. Each of these three vessels is a separate and distinct vessel. Therefore, when someone performs a procedure in the iliac territory, the first vessel treated is reported using a base code. If an additional vessel is treated on that side of the body in an ipsilateral territory, an add-on code will be reported. The add-on code would be reported once for the second vessel treated and can be repeated twice for the, if the second and a third vessel are treated. The same thing goes for the tibia perineal region. There's a base code for treatment 
there's an add-on code used for each additional vessel. If three tibial vessels are treated, there would be one base code and two add-on codes reported. Those vessels include the anterior tibial, the posterior tibial, and the perineal arteries. The tibia perineal trunk is not a separate vessel. The tibia perineal trunk is an extension of either the perineal or the posterior tibial artery. Therefore, if the tibia perineal trunk and the perineal arteries are treated, that is one vessel. If the tibia perineal trunk and the anterior tibial artery are treated, that would be two vessels, since the TP trunk being an extension of either the perineal or the posterior tibial is separate from the anterior tibial. Lastly, the femoral popliteal region is now treated as one vessel. That includes the common femoral, the deep femoral, the superficial femoral, and the popliteal both above and below the knee. One code is used to report treatment regardless of the number of lesions treated. Superficial femoral artery stenting is reported the same as common femoral stenting at the same time as deep femoral stenting at the same time as superficial femoral stenting at the same time as popliteal stenting. Likewise, a superficial femoral artery stent performed at the same time as a below knee popliteal artery angioplasty is reported the same as if the below knee popliteal artery was not treated. Any angioplasty within that region is bundled into the stent code. For the rules within the territory, you report the most comprehensive treatment within a given vessel. For example, in the iliac region, if the common iliac is treated with a stent and the external iliac is treated with an angioplasty, the most comprehensive is the stent, and therefore the stent base code would be reported first. Alternatively, if the common iliac is treated with an angioplasty and the external iliac is treated with a stent, the same rules would apply, and the stent being the most comprehensive, even it if it is more distal, and even if it is treated second, would be reported first with the base code. Keep in mind that the hierarchy differs from the numerical order within the CPT manual. Stent and atherectomy is the most intense service and be, would be reported first, followed by atherectomy, followed by stent, followed by angioplasty. Again, remember that the femoral popliteal segment is always one vessel, and the iliac and tibioperineal has a maximum of three vessels. Only one base code is allowed in each territory. Additional ipsilateral vessels treated in the iliac and tibioperineal requires the use of an add-on code. Therefore, the common and external iliac arteries treated on the same side would be reported with a base code plus an add-on code. However, these are ipsilateral treatments and therefore if kissing common iliac artery stents are placed, since that is being performed on both sides of the body, it's no longer ipsilateral and the base code would be repeated. This could either be reported with units of two or with a 59 modifier on the second base code. If there's one lesion that spans two vessels and is treated with a single therapy, such as one stent which treats a distal common iliac that extends to proximal external iliac artery lesion, that would be reported with just one base code. However, if stents are placed in both the common and the external iliac artery, for more extensive lesions, the base code and an add-on code would be reported. What remains separately reportable? Mechanical thrombectomy, thrombolytic infusion, ultrasound guidance for vascular access as required, and any additional catheter access solely for diagnostic imaging purposes. Listed here is a table of the CPT codes for the iliac territory. Remember that atherectomy is not 
Category 1. It has been moved to Category 3 and therefore is not listed here with Category 1 codes. The base codes, 37220 for angioplasty and 37221 for stent with or without angioplasty, would be reported first. And the add-on codes, as listed, would be reported in addition to one of these base codes. The femoral popliteal table has no add-on code because the femoral popliteal segment is one vessel regardless of the number of lesions treated. The tibia perineal region has all eight codes listed in the table. Some examples. A 65-year-old male with a left foot non-healing ulcer has a palpable femoral pulse and no pedal pulse. The patient has had prior angiography, which reveals a left superficial femoral artery moderate stenosis and an above knee popliteal artery occlusion. Right common femoral artery retrograde access is obtained and the left SFA and popliteal artery is selected. The SFA disease is treated with angioplasty and the popliteal occlusion is treated initially with angioplasty and then intravascular stent given significant recoil. The left popliteal stent is the most comprehensive procedure and is reported by 37226. The left SFA angioplasty and the angioplasty in the popliteal segment beforehand are bundled. The third order catheterization is bundled and the completion angiography is bundled. Again note that the 37224 femoral popliteal angioplasty code is not appropriate. The stent code 37226 is. Example 2. A 65-year-old diabetic female with forefoot gangrene has three-vessel tibial artery occlusion by angiography. Antigrade femoral access is obtained. The posterior tibial, anterior tibial, and perineal arteries are all selectively catheterized. The tibia perineal trunk, posterior tibial, anterior tibial, and perineal arteries are all approached with atherectomy. After completion, angioplasty is used to, tr to treat diffuse residual stenosis in each of the four vessels. This is reported with the base code 37229 for the first vessel treated with atherectomy, that would be the anterior tibial artery. Two additional vessels are treated, the posterior tibial and the perineal arteries. The tibia perineal trunk is not a separate fourth vessel. The angioplasty is all bundled, and the selective catheterization is all bundled. Therefore, the three codes listed above would be reported. The 59 modifier is placed on the atherectomy code since it is repeated. The last example shows the rare instance where a separate catheter may be required and could be separately reportable. A 70-year-old gentleman with claudication has no femoral pulses and inflow disease by non-invasive arterial imaging. No other imaging has been performed. Left brachial arterial axis is obtained and a non-selective aortic catheterization is performed with diagnostic aortography. Bilateral femoral punctures are performed with deployment of kissing common iliac artery stents after that diagnostic aortogram revealed the lesions. The right common iliac artery stent is reported with base code 37221. Since the stent on the left side is on the contralateral iliac, it is not ipsilateral and therefore not reported with an add-on code. The base code 37221 is repeated with a 59 modifier. The catheterizations from both groins are bundled. However, the arm brachial-based non-selective catheter is a catheter that had no intervention performed with it. Therefore, it is separately reportable with a non-selective aortic code 36200. A 59 modifier has been added to indicate that this was separately reportable. The aortogram is performed, and since no prior study was performed in this clinical situation, the 75625 code is reported, one with a 26 modifier because it was performed in a facility and the professional fee is reported only, and two with a 59 modifier to clarify that this is a diagnostic angiogram. Lastly, 
the supraingual atherectomy codes, or T codes, are listed here. Remember, this is a bundling of the surgical procedure code and the radiology supervision and, and interpretation code. However, the catheterization has not been bundled. The locations include the renal artery, a visceral artery except for the renal, the abdominal aorta, a brachiocephalic and branches, and the iliac artery as listed here.